Hey everybody, it's Ben here. I've been working on my 2013 Tesla Model S battery pack because I had an error which made the car undrivable. Now I took off the battery pack, started taking it apart, and I tracked the issue down to a corroded capacitor on one of the battery modules BMS boards. Now the issue with that though is the corrosion wasn't just caused by uh, mechanical wear uh, against that surface mount uh, component but because there was moisture in the battery pack. Now, unfortunately, part of the design of this battery pack, um, it uses what they call umbrella valves that basically they're for pressure relief, but there's a lot of them on this car. And that means that moisture can get in through those valves. So I'm gonna take, uh, take the covers off of here. I'm gonna get at the valves, take a look at them and figure out what to do next. Okay, today I'm looking at the sides of the battery pack here. We have these rails that go down the sides, um, and it's, you know, kind of this, this part underneath held in by screws like this right here, and that's what covers those umbrella valves. Now, unfortunately, it looks like dirt can get in there, uh, so I'm going to take this off and see what it looks like under there. This is what it looks like on the inside. Here's those umbrella valves, and it's on the outside and under that ski side rail that uh, covers them up. So the first thing I notice here is, you know, we've got this kind of the shape to the side cover, and it's held in place with these screws that uses a uh, T25. Um, some of them are dirty. I notice this one here has some gunk in it. I'll, I'll have to stick a pick in there before uh, getting that one out. The other thing is there's kind of downward pressure on this. Uh, this piece goes into some tabs, then bends up, and then is held in with the screws. So to get the screws out, you have to do the opposite. You have to hold this up and pull the screw out. Um, otherwise, that screw is going to bind out, bind up, strip, maybe snap. So we're going to use some clamps like this to hold everything in place while we do that. And of course I can already see corrosion on there. So I've got a speed clamp like this on either side of the screw as I pull it out. So then I'll just move the first clamp on down to the next section before I pull the next one out. Now this one has some dirt in there, so I'm going to pick that out. Uh, to make sure that my bit can fully seat in the screw. Then take this clamp, move it down to the other side of the next one. And then I'll just keep doing this all the way down. So with all the screws out, we can see, look at this dirt in here. We can already see a bunch of dirt. Yeah, especially along the front, you can see all this dirt just kind of caked right in there. So now I'm going to uh, remove those clamps. And see if I can Swing this down, whether I need a gentle use of a pry bar or not. I mean, it's metal, so I should be able to stick a pry bar in there and not have it be a big deal. Okay, and I 
have a feeling I'm gonna be dumping dirt all over myself. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Look at that dirt. And you know what? I bet if I measure that, that lines up pretty much exactly with where those valves are bad. Each of the bays in the battery pack is about a foot wide. And if I measure this, the first foot is completely caked in dirt. It looks like this kind of triangular part here lines up with the division between the modules. So we've got like three more inches after that. So that's gotta be like the first bay plus at least the first valve of the second one. I just noticed, depending on the angle of the light, I can actually see kind of some, boy, I don't know if this is gonna show up on camera. I can see some sort of dome shapes. There's actually impressions in the dirt of the bottom of those valves which we should now be able to see. So let's go low and point up. Okay, well, looking at the front here, these things are absolutely filthy. Just mud kicked on all around. And you can see that dirt goes back down into the, into the start of that second row of umbrella valves over there. Just gonna see if I can push one of these out from behind. There we go, got one out. Now this is the one which was second closest from the front. Some nasty organic material in there. Kind of up towards the top. That part looks a little funny. I mean, it's just, just plain gross. No way that is an effective valve. So this side is closer to the front, this is closer to the back. This is still on the passenger side directly in front of the wheel well. And they're all filthy. I mean, they're worse over here. But, oh my God, nasty, nasty, nasty. Okay, so we established that these are dirty. But what if I just cleaned them? So I threw them in the sink with a little bit of uh, dishwasher detergent and scrubbed at them mostly with an old toothbrush just to see what would it be like because I had heard of people uh, simply cleaning these and replacing them with pretty good results. And if I just peel this open Yeah, dang, that is dirty in there. Dirty, dirty, dirty. Gross. Okay, so it needed some more toothbrush scrubbing uh, behind that flap, between the flap and the body of the valve. But the results really didn't look too bad. I couldn't even tell that this one was supposed to be clear. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Now, of course, the ski rail cover was also absolutely filthy, and it wasn't going to fit in my bathroom sink. So I took it out to my driveway where I could give it a car wash. I just got some uh, liquid dish soap, a uh, bucket with some rags and a scrub brush. Uh, soaked it, lathered it, scrubbed it down, rinsed it all off, and dried it off. And then, of course, I did the same thing again when I got the other side cover off. 
So here's the cover on the other side. I got all the screws out, but I thought I'd tap it with a hammer uh, to try to loosen it up before prying it off. And sure enough, uh, I'm glad I did because there was a lot of dirt that came out of there. And I think on the first side, it was hard to get off because it was so caked with dirt. Back on the passenger side, I thought I'd try to get some more of the dirt off before removing all the umbrella valves. So I give it a scrub down with a nylon bristle brush. And then I give it a wipe down with some soapy water. To actually remove the umbrella valves, I used some plastic automotive trim tools, and from the outside, I put my mini pry bar in there and pulled down. And then from the inside, I used a different tool to release the little latches that holds it in place. And then they'd pop right out. And then I just repeated that many more times. Now, I probably could have removed the umbrella valves faster, but in this case, I wanted to make sure that I could reuse them if I needed to. Uh, here's one way to remove them faster. Okay, this is what happens if I just pry. Ready? But yeah, the results of that aren't so great. So like right there, the tabs just broke right off. So I've got all of the umbrella valves out of the battery pack. There's 84 of them in total. Um, overall, they don't look too terrible. I mean, there's definitely, uh, there's dirt in there. Um, there's these little ridges, and those kind of hold it off from the battery pack, but that's still the outside of the valve, but you know, dirty. Most of these, the inside of the valve looked pretty good. Um, it's relatively clean on the outside because I wiped these off before pulling them. But most of them, if I actually peel back the valve, they look fine. You know, the O-ring looks okay. There's not dirt in the valve. But those were just the, um, the valves in general. So let's instead, we'll take a look at the valves that were in the front left. So this was, um, these were out of module seven. So on the nice clean ones, on the nice clean ones, you could see the bottom of the, the flap was orange on this one. You only see little tiny bits of orange cause there's just uh, gunk inside the valve. Oh, go, ugh. Yeah, so there's junk in there. So module seven and 10, these had moisture in them. Um, you know, I was having issues with the battery pack because of literally this you know, dirt and gunk getting in here. Ugh, gross. And I apologize in advance, it's just hard to get good focus on small parts like this. But yeah, just gunk falling out of here. Ugh, gross, gross, gross. So this got gunk in it being right behind the wheel. Stuff always being tossed up from the road gets in there, gunks it up. It's kind of held open. Moisture can get into here, um, start to cause some corrosion inside, like on the circuit board on a capacitor C27, because the conform wall coating is rubbed away by the plastic case. So it's kind of a perfect storm kind of a thing. Now these here, 
or from module 10 after washing them but you know just after washing them really well um, this would probably work just fine I could probably have just removed the bad valves cleaned them up really good and put them back in the problem with that is the ones in the front they're just taking such a beating from the road that if I did that at some point they would fail again and I don't want that to happen so big picture, it looks like um, this was essentially a design flaw. I mean, this was only the second year that uh, the Tesla Model S was made. Um, and they've changed them since then. The new spec actually has solid plugs at modules 7 and 10 in front, right behind the front wheels. And then all the other modules have a lot fewer umbrellas, um, a bunch of plugs, and then also a gore breather valve. So what I'm going to do is just order the current parts and get them installed in here um, and then I can start working on everything else for putting the battery pack back together. I hope you like these videos. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that little notification bell and make sure to turn all notifications on. And until next time, stay charged up.